I have spent the past three months working on this massive build behind me, and it's finally time to give you guys a full walkthrough with all the details. This build is based on the first three and a half minutes or so of the ground battle of Christophsis, which takes place in the 2008 animated Clone Wars movie. To start with, I wanted to give a few fun stats about the build just to help give a sense of scale. Now, I don't have an exact part count here, but my general estimate based off of Bricklink orders and some basic math is that this build consists of about 45,000 parts. There are 211 minifigures featured here and this includes 89 b1 battle droids 20 super battle droids 99 clones anakin obi-wan kenobi and r2d2 let's dive into things and take a look at the general architecture and design of the build the first thing that you'll probably notice here are these three large buildings behind the main battle the building in the middle and on the right here are each sitting at 12 stories tall this puts them at a height of about 32 inches off of the table each floor is made of six identical panels, which looks simple at a first glance, but they actually use a lot of plates and small parts to keep the design consistent. This is because I had to make room for hinge bricks on the inside of the walls to make a solid support structure and keep things standing. Each floor has these hinge bricks at the top of each corner to keep everything anchored together properly. This building on the left here is six stories tall with some damage detail built into the top floor here where things got destroyed in an earlier part of the battle. Most of the buildings on Christophsis use this very similar design structure. You can see in this image here that they are all hexagon shaped and they are about similar heights to one another as well. Moving up to the roof design here, I figured that adding a couple of things in that looked like an HVAC system and some ventilation units would get the job done. If you take a look through these transparent bricks here, you can see that these buildings are actually hollow and there are no individual floors at each of these levels. Because of that, that means that there's no center support running through the building and the roofs had to be built quite thick so they could support their own weight. You can see that there are some spotlights mounted on top of the buildings here and we'll touch on that in a little bit when we get to talking about lighting. But the main thing I wanna point out here is this gunship designed by M5 Builds. I love the design of this thing, it's minifigure scale and I especially enjoy the brick built doors on the side of the gunship. I mounted this on top of the roof using transclear panel pieces and the majority of the weight is actually over the back wall of the building so it's supported quite well. It it definitely wasn't easy getting this thing mounted up here and I snapped the wing off the first time I tried but I'm glad I got it to work. It adds quite a lot of height to the build overall and it ends up sitting about four feet off of the table which makes this about seven feet tall from the ground. The next thing I want to touch on here is all of these crystal structures that you see coming off the side of the building and across the ground. I was a little bit concerned initially picking this color for these crystals because if you look at this image on screen now you can see that these crystals are meant to be somewhat see-through or transparent. Clearly this Lego color is not see-through, it's not transparent but it is very vibrant. And that's one of the decisions that I had to make when I was deciding between using this or something like a trans blue color. But one of the reasons that I picked medium azure to be the color for this build is because trans blue would have been just prohibitively expensive to get in this quantity. I was able to find some of these parts on pick a brick walls in Lego stores and that really helped to make things quite a bit cheaper. There are some downsides to this because I was limited on what types of parts I could use. These slopes were relatively inexpensive at this angle, but if I wanted to get slopes at steeper angles, or snot bricks to attach things onto the side here. They're very expensive in this color, so things had to look a little bit blocky at the end of the day. All things considered, I'm pretty happy with how they ended up looking, especially given the design limitations that I had. One thing I knew I wanted to incorporate into these buildings was some destruction detail. The building on the right hand side here is fully intact apart from some damage on this bridge. Probably one of my favorite spots of damage detail is on the side of the center building here where I created this hole. After building in this detail, I added a plate with some tiles behind it to cover up the opening and then some broken glass on the ground here. The majority of destruction in this mock is included in this building on the left over here. I added some damage details into the crystal structure on the side here and then also created some rubble in the center of this floor area on the building. I really love how this broken glass looks laying on the floor here and I actually think it looks pretty convincing. One of my favorite design features of the build overall is these bridges that connect between the skyscrapers. These support arches underneath each of the bridges actually turned out to be pretty accurate to the source material and I really enjoy the shaping that I was able to include overall. Starting with this fully intact bridge on the right over here, you can see these clones are making a rush from the building on the right over into this building on the left. They're overlooking the battle here and some of them are firing their blasters down to take out the droids below. Over at the back of the pack here, you can see this clone that's been shot down with a medic that's taking care of him. Moving over to the front side of the building here, you can see this small area of a destroyed bridge. This chunk of the bridge here is just hanging on by this droid arm and hose piece that it's connected to. Over on the right hand side here, you can see another chunk of the bridge that fell down and has been moved off to the side by the clones so that they can get it out of the way of the main battle. Moving on to the final and most exciting 
riding bridge section, you can see that there's this massive explosion that's taking place here. This is in the middle of being obliterated and it's completely taken out the connection between the bridge and this building on the left. You can see the impact from this blast is causing this clone to be blown away by the shock wave. And then these two guys over here seem like they're going to be all right because they must have seen it coming a little bit sooner so they're not going to end up like this guy. We'll get into turning on all the LEDs for this build in just a minute here but I just wanted to point out that these bridges were also super helpful for running power between each of the buildings. There's a hollow section under each of the bridges that can be used to run wiring and keep it mostly out of sight and then I also ran wiring behind these barriers on the side of the bridge. All of the wiring disconnects at the seams of each of the base plates underneath this entire build so that I can transport it to Brickworld Chicago. So now that we've talked about the design of the structures and everything it's time to take a look at the battle and we're going to start with the separatist side of things here. At the back of the build here you'll see that I have two armored assault tanks and one corporate alliance tank droid. There are a ton of these in the actual battle, but because these are minifigure scale and I can't make this build a whole lot bigger, I was only able to fit three tanks into the build. These models are from Brick Vault. I love the way they look. They're minifigure scale, super detailed, and I'm definitely gonna be hanging on to them for a long time. You can see represented by this small effect piece here that this tank in the back is the one that's blowing up the bridge. I've tried to include this type of logic for all the explosions in this build so they're not just coming out of nowhere. As far as the battle droids go on this side of the build, you can see that they're lined up in a pretty standard formation. I've been following along with Coconut Brick Studios Coruscant updates and I really love the craters that he's built into his battle. So I took a little bit of inspiration from that and built this small crater in here to kind of break up the monotony of all these droids being lined up in formation. Rather than making this explosion look like it was something that was in the process of happening, kind of like the bridge here, I decided that I would add in these trans orange cheese slopes to make it look like they were embers that were sitting in the bottom of the crater. So it looks like it was something that happened recently, but doesn't detract from the explosion that's supposed to take some focus behind it. One thing you may notice in general is that I have packed this build full of minifigures. There are a ton of them on this battlefield. And I know that this is something that large scale mock builders tend to do with adding too many minifigures, but if you watch the clip of the Battle of Christophsis, you can see that this is pretty accurate. There are tons of droids in formation on the Separatist side of the battle, and there are a bunch of clones on the Republic side as well. It's just a very messy and chaotic battle. The next thing I wanna focus on here is this Octopara droid, and this is based off of a design made by Phoenix Building Studios. And I say based off of because I initially built this thing exactly how he intended it to be built, but then I had to modify things because I wanted to put a battery box inside the head of the droid. To do that, I had to make the head a little bit larger than it's actually supposed to be, and I had to add some slopes and tiles to try and retain that rounded look to things. But it was totally worth it because the battery box that's inside the head of the droid has allowed me to get power to Anakin's lightsaber and power to this blaster bolt that's coming over here to create an explosion on the other side. The scene that I'm representing here is the one where Anakin jumps down off of the roof of one of the buildings with Captain Rex and a couple of other clone lieutenants. You'll notice that I'm using Phase 1 to 501st clones here from Clone Army Customs, which are technically inaccurate as I learned after I bought them, but I like the way they look so I decided to include them anyways. The scene from the movie has Captain Rex and his clones on the ground firing up at an Octopara droid, but I thought for the purposes of this build it was more visually interesting to have them firing on the droid as they came down off of the building. Moving on to the middle area of the battle here, this is where we have most of the action taking place. First and foremost, I had to of course include the legendary clone that punches a droid in the face. There's also a scene in the battle where Commander Cody comes and uses some melee combos on a couple of the droids and one of them he kicks and they go flying so I thought that was a fun detail to include here. We also have Obi-Wan Kenobi who is fighting a super battle droid. I think in the scene he actually jumps on top of the battle droid and cuts it in half but I didn't really have a way to do that very well here so I just had him fighting this droid. Some other details that are happening here, we've got this clone lieutenant that I added in basically for a pop of color and because I had him available. And then there's another clone medic here that is tending to a wounded clone who's leaned up against this pile of debris. In the movie, there's also this clip that includes a broken down ATTE in the background of the scene. I wanted to represent that somehow in this build, so I pulled the leg off of one of my ATTE play sets and set it up as a spot for this clone to hide for some cover. So now we're onto the Republic side of the battle, and I think the main detail that you'll probably notice here is this large trench structure that I've built. We see this in the movie where there's a bunch of clones that are hiding behind these crystals, and I've got them represented here with their long blasters. There's also a clip where there are three ATRTs that come running and jumping over this trench, 
I included one of them here because I think including more than just the one would have made things even more cluttered, but I really like the way this thing looks. I'm glad I was able to get it positioned like this. This is another Brick Vault model. It is minifigure scale. And I think it looks great. I also included a yellow clone commander here that is giving some instructions to these clones that are running through the trench. He's holding onto some macro binoculars here. I think that's what they're called even if they're not attached to their head. And then you've got all these guys rushing through the middle here to come and join the main battle. At the front of the trench area here, I built another large explosion, which is coming from the Octopower droid that's shooting in from the side here. And I've got another clone being blown out of the way here with his gun shooting off to the side. And a couple of crystal pieces here that are representing just general debris from the explosion. Toward the backside of the battle here, you'll see that I've got a couple of other clone commanders that are doing some strategizing. And then there's another scene where this clone commander pets R2-D2, so I got him represented right here as well. Of course, the main feature of this backside of the build here are these two large AV-7 cannons. Again, these are from Brick Vault. They're minifigure scale. They're super detailed, and I love the way they look. In the actual scene, there are four of these cannons included. I've only got two of them here because this bridge gets cut in half here by the black border. At the very back of the build here, we've got a couple of clones with some brick-built crates. These crates are pretty basic, but they are based off of the design from the source material. You can see in this shot here, they're kind of these square crates with these rounded circles that are indented on them. Now that you guys have seen all the details, let's cut the lights and turn on the LEDs so you can see how everything looks in the dark. I've blocked out as much light as possible from this room, but I can't change the fact that there's this giant window over here, so bear with me. I'll have some nicer shots at the end of this video at nighttime. But basically what we've got here is that there's these spotlights that are shining down on the battle from the tops of the buildings, and then there's another spotlight sitting up at the top that's pointed up towards the gunship so that can be illuminated at night as well. Each of these buildings here has LED strips that are connected in on the underside of the roof as well as lighting coming up from the floor to try and get things looking as even as possible with the lighting. On the left hand side here I've got one LED strip that is mounted on the underside of this flooring area. It's hooked up to a flicker effects unit and obviously that's because this building has been blown up so the power is going to be a little bit buggy. Right here we've got the armored assault tank with a flickering LED inside the main cannon that's showing that it's the thing that's causing this explosion on the bridge here. I also used a flicker effects unit on this explosion here to make it look like it was right in the middle of being blown up. I took a pretty similar approach here with the Octopara droid having a flashing LED inside of its main cannon. And then I have more flashing LEDs inside this explosion on the right hand side here to show that this is being blown up by the Octopara droid. Last but not least, I've got these LED lightsabers for Anakin and Obi-Wan, and I think that these are great because they help add a focal point into the center of the battle, and it makes it really easy to find these main characters. All right, so that's going to do it for the walkthrough portion of this video. I've got a cinematic coming up for you guys in just a second here, but before we get to that, I just want to say a heartfelt thanks to all of you who have watched throughout this entire series. I could have never expected this amount of support on a mock building series with a channel that's as new as mine because I've been doing this for less than a year. And if this is the first video of mine that you've seen, I just want to say thanks for being here and maybe consider subscribing so you can join me on this journey of mock building and more YouTube videos coming in the future. Let's take a look at this short cinematic. Thank you. 